that in those days when the, the king also sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Susha, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of patience and Median, the nobles and the princes of the provinces, being before him, when he showed the riches of his glory, kingdom, and the honor of his excellent majesty, many days, even a hundred and fourscore days. <laughs> Yes. 
That shows you the influence of one name. If one don't have the spirit of God, money, when money comes, money will inflict such a person. And it will inflict such a person in a negative way. It will make the person not to give glory to God. It will make the person to honor his money more than honoring God. Yes, God permits riches for every one of us. But we must give the glory back to Him. Not the money, not the wealth that He has given to us. As God really make that mistake, He begins to show His wealth, what He has, he has gotten. And in the long run, is the, the mistake. That is because He has no spirit of God in Him. That is because there is no wisdom of God in his life. And that's the danger when one is rich, but there is no God in his own life. That was also the case of Pharaoh. In Genesis chapter 40, verse 20. Genesis chapter 40, verse 20. Yes, he was supposed to read, but without the wisdom of God. And he was what he was misbehaving in chapter in verse 20. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the air of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. He read and he was celebrating birthday. Birthday is a day of joy. But his son, as he was celebrating, he was also doing harm of him because there's no wisdom of God in him. There is a danger when one is great, but no God in him or her. He will end up destroying himself and destroying others also. Instead of him to give uh, glory to God for what God is doing in his life, they didn't wear it, and then right aid to him, he was destroying other people. That's the case of Lazarus also, who was trying to show himself, show the kingdom that God had given to him. He thought that all he has, all the uh, person he occupied, every province is, is taken care of with his own power, not knowing his father that are lying to be dead. And he quickly organized a, a feast and begin to invite a lot of dignitaries to show the words he has. Refusing to give honor to God. In Daniel also in chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4, verse 29 and verse 30. There you see, you see a king who really misbehaved. Even though God gave him rich, he, he had riches. But in the rich is getting to his head and he begins to misbehave. Instead of him to give honor to God, give glory to God, he was not doing that. It was God that God is the one that gave him that riches. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 29 to verse 30. And at the end of 20, uh, uh, 12 months, he walked in the palace of the, of, the, of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my, of my power and for the honor of my majesty and blessing? But what did he do? He became proud. Because he's rich now. 
Because he has a lot of things going on for him. He forget that God is the owner of everything he owns. And he begins to ascribe the glory to himself. At the end of the day, God took away all those riches from him and sent him into the, the forest. God even made him an animal at the end of the day because he did not give God the glory. That's the danger when God permits riches in your life, give you riches, but you are not giving God the glory. You tell yourself, how am I not giving God the glory in my riches, in my wealth? When you are not taking God very seriously, when you are not honoring Him, when you are not honoring His way, even though He has blessed you with riches, this man foolishly ascribed the glory to Himself that He owns everything. And that all He has is His own power. What you have done for me. So if after God is blessing you, blessing in your own way, in a little way, God is blessing you, are you really glorifying God with it? Every blessing, every prosperity God gives one is for one to keep on serving Him, not to despise or neglect Him. Because this man lacked not the wisdom of God. That is why he is misbehaving like this. That is why, as we are in this ministry and we are hearing the, the, the word of God, when our riches come, or in our riches, we must keep on serving God and ascribe all glory to Him. Because everything we have is the one that gives it to us. No one that the Bible says, what do you have that has not been given to you by God? In Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. God is really ready to bless everyone. And he permits riches for everyone. But it depends on your relationship after you have given that blessing, given that gift, that which is to you. Job chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. There was a man in the land of Ruth whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and is still evil. And there we are born unto him seven sons and seven daughters. So and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camel, camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. In that street, he is giving all the glory to God. He never has cried the glory to himself. That is why he is upright and fear God. So it's a good thing if one is rich in, in, in life and also rich in God. Like this man called Joe. A man that fears God. A man with a prophet heart. A man that eschewed evil. And God blessed him with riches and he was not proud of his riches. But he keep on serving God. That is the difference between him and the man called Lazarus. Even though God gave him riches, he didn't give God the glory. He was looking and showing all that God had given him, ascribing the glory to himself. In Daniel chapter 2, 
Daniel chapter 2, verse 48. Daniel chapter 2, verse 48. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. For serving God truly, God bless him even in the foreign land. But he was not proud with the, with the best God has given to him. That is important of being a child of God and being in wealth also. When man is not in, 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 in the sight of God, when it is come, he will not be able to manage it because he will become proud. And that is the danger when one is rich but has no God in his own life. He will even say in verse 49, then Daniel requested of the king and set Shedra, Mesha, and Abednego over the affair of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. You see that this man is not proud of what God has blessed him with, even in a foreign land. He requested that his other colleague be put in great position while he sat at the gate. That is a man that has the spirit of God and not allow money to get into his head. Even though God has blessed him with wisdom, with understanding, and with riches, he didn't get to his head. The Spirit of God made him to be very humble. He was sitting at the gate of the king. In Genesis chapter 3, chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. That's where you see how God blessed this man called Abraham. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lodged with him into the south. And Abraham was very rich in, in cattle, in silver, and in gold. That is why it is good when one has God and has riches also. Because the Spirit of God will be directing him on what to do, he may be not to be proud. Look at that in, in Genesis chapter 25, verse 7 to 8. Genesis chapter 25, 7 to 8. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived an hundred, three score, and fifteen years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And the righteous man keep on serving God. There will not be sorrow in that blessing. He will not regret having that riches. Why? Because the Spirit of God is in his life. So the blessing of God make that man break, and there's no sorrow in him. In First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 26 to 28. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 26 to 28. Thus David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel, 
and the time that he reigned over Israel was 40 years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and 30 and 20 years reigned he in Jerusalem. And he died in a very good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon, his son, reigned in his stead. Serving God because he was a child of God. And God blessed him with riches. And he was not proud because the Spirit of God is in his life. And see, even in his old age, God was still there for him. God was still blessing him with riches and honor. You see that a true child of God that God blessed, he will bless him both with riches and with honor. Be because he will not be proud. He will not show up his way. He will only give honor to God. And God will be blessing him that way. You look at also in Psalm 37 verse 25. Psalm 37 verse 25. Still on this man called David. Because he's a man that was on hand. And he was truly serving God. Psalm 37 verse 25. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken? Nor be seen begging bread. Those that we have no sorrow at all as, as if they go for the line. He, he said he had been, he was young and now he's old. He has not seen the righteous, that God forsake the righteous. God never forsake the righteous or his children. The blessing of God for his own children. He will always remember them. He will never forsake them. Why? Because they are righteous. Because they are serving him in truth and righteousness. And that is the testimony David had here. He was very young and was seeing the hand of God in his life. God is helping to overcome challenges in life. God is blessing him little by little. God bless him to a greater height. And when now he's old, he still see the hand of God in his life because he's serving God. He knew that God is the one that gave him that riches. And because he knew that, he was giving honor to God. And that teaches us a great lesson there. That God is ready to bless us. If we are ever ready to serve him also. In first King chapter 3. In first King chapter 3. From verse 9 to verse 13. First King chapter 3. From verse 9 to verse 13. See the case of Solomon there. God really also played that man called Solomon. In verse 9, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to toy that people that I may design between good and bad. For who is able to judge this that are so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thy enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to design judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy word. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding and so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee, and have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, 
both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee. Or uh, this man calls Solomon is really serving God, and, and, act, and he, when he asked God for a thing, God gave him what he asked for. But look at God here, because this man was righteous, even that which he did not ask for, but God knows that we have need of it, God provided for him. That tells you and me that God knows our needs. And is ready to supply all our needs and come to the riches and in glory by Christ Jesus. But what is required of us is to keep on serving him in truth and in righteousness. That is what this man Solomon did. He was serving God truly. He was not looking for God, asking God that God gave him one, but gave him, that God gave him understanding on how to, uh, to, to govern the people. And that impressed God so much. God gave him what he requested for, which is wisdom, and bless him with riches and honor. That's the great blessing for you and for me. That God is ready to bless those that are serving him. In as much as they serve him in truth and in righteousness. And that is why the, 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 the topic is God permit riches for all. For all. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 to verse 9. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 to verse 9. Again, the devil taketh him all into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get the end, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall be. Promising that if you bow down and worship him, you give him every uh, of the, the kingdom of the world. But because Jesus had the Spirit of God, he was able to overcome him. Because Jesus knew that Satan is not the owner of the world. That everything that in the world that God created belongs to God. And not to Satan. With that knowledge, we're able to overcome Satan. Because Jesus knew that everything belongs to God. And not to, not to Satan. Not to any man. But unto God alone. And you see, Jesus was able to overcome Satan because he knew everything belongs to God. That's the advantage when one has the Spirit of God. That is important when one has the Spirit of God. And the wisdom of God in his or her life. And the wisdom of God in his or her life. Because he will direct such a person. He will make the person not to be proud. But if one allows riches into his life, the riches will destroy such a person. If one allows riches into his life, and no life, and nobody is his life, God, he will definitely suffer for it. Yeah, that God allows riches in one's life, but not mean he or she should the reason why God blesses this one is the one who keep on growing in Him. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. And his name, and into many foolish and awful laws, which drown men in destruction and perdition. But not with the fear of God in him. 
anyone that is rich and don't have the fear of God in him or life will put, fall into what? Diverse temptation. And that will lead, and that will lead into his uh, own destruction. Like Azarus, yeah, that was read, that they, they read to us. He's read and refused to give honor to God. Instead, they organized feasts and invited a lot of dignitaries to come and see what he had. And so, therefore, anyone that is read but without God will fall into a lot of problems. What should we do? When God gave us riches, in that same festival chapter 6, verse 6, but godliness and contentment is a great gain. That will tell you, living righteously, living holily, when you are rich, when God blesses you, is a great gain. Not to be to be proud, serving God in truth and in righteousness, in humility, is a great thing. No one that this man in Proverbs chapter 30. He prayed a very important prayer. In Proverbs chapter 30. Verse 7 to verse 9. Proverbs chapter 30 from verse 7 to verse 9. He said, Two things are very required of thee. Deny me then not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal, and take the name of my God in vain. It was prayed to God that God give me riches that I can be able to manage. So that I will not deny you when I have that riches. So that I will not, I, I will not go astray when the riches comes. This is a man of God that is praying correctly that God, the riches that you give me, don't, don't give me riches that will destroy me, that will let me to go out of you. This is a man, a wise man that knows the danger of riches without God in it. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is God? Who is, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and make and take thy name and take the name of the, my God in vain. That God help me, give me normal riches that I can be able to manage serving God. Why? Why did he pray that prayer? He want to remain serving God. He don't want to deviate from serving God. He knows that riches that God will give him that will put into problem, God should not give him that riches. That riches, and then the Solomon fall aside. If you abandon God because he had riches, but in the long run, he forsook God. This man was a plan from the mystic of Solomon. And he was praying, God, help me to be righteous and be content and have contentment also. And that was the prayer of that man. But truly, God wants every one of us to be rich. No wonder when he came, he, he, he became false that you and I can be rich. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 
7 Corinthians 38, verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Not to make us to be in poverty or in lack. But to be rich, that is why he came for you and for me. But the truth of the matter is that as God blesses us, we must keep on serving him. Even as God is going to bless us, we must keep on serving him. And keep on praying that God help me to manage my, my riches. Because riches is one of the most difficult things to manage in life. But with the Spirit of God in one, one will be to manage the riches God has given to him or her. I pray God help us as he blesses us, we will keep on serving him in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's rise up as we pray.